You might think that the pull-up is as simple an exercise as you can get. This is a basic bodyweight movement that builds big lats and your biceps to a slightly lesser extent. In fact, it's such a common move that it's often used as a basic measure of strength and fitness. But whilst this is all true, the pull-up can also actually do a whole lot more. It trains a whole lot more, and with a few subtle tweaks, you can get all sorts of additional benefits out of it. There's more to the pull-up than meets the eye. First of all, the pull-up doesn't just train the biceps. In many ways, it actually trains the biceps in a more functional manner than exercises like the curl, especially if you use a supinated grip, which would make it a chin-up, and this targets the biceps a little bit more. And the reason it's so valuable for the biceps is because your biceps actually are biarticular. That means that they span two different joints, in this case, the elbow joint and the shoulder. The biceps therefore actually play a role in both shoulder stabilization and flexion. So if you're just holding your arm still and curling at the elbow, then you're not using the bicep to its fullest. But of course, the pull-up is also great for training the back, and I don't just mean the lats here, I mean the rhomboids, the traps, even the rear delts. All these work together to help retract the scapula and pull your body up towards the bar. However, if you're performing pull-ups without giving it any thought, you're probably not maximizing this benefit, and I'm gonna show you why here. So a lot of people will perform a pull-up in a very vertical manner. Simply grab the bar and pull themselves straight up like this. Whilst that's fine and it has its benefits that we'll talk about in a moment, it doesn't maximize the involvement of those additional muscles in the back. And if this is your primary tool for training your back, you could be getting more out of this movement. So what we want you to do is to arch your back and perform what are sometimes called arched pull-ups. Here you're going to extend your spine and even your legs to a lesser extent so that you're essentially looking like a, a bridge. Then pull yourself up, leading with the chest and the sternum rather than the chin. The aim here is to touch your chest onto the bar or get it as close as you can. So that would look something like this. My bar actually isn't perfect for this because the uh, these arms stick out and get a little bit in the way. So that's it, right? That's the perfect pull-up. That's how you should be doing your pull-ups. Well, no, that's not really the point. And in fact, that's one of the things that I try and rally against on this channel in general. There's no one correct way to do a movement. And actually, there are benefits to not doing your pull-ups this way. First of all, if you want to get those benefits, if you want to train the scapular retractors, you want to train the rear delts, you can do something similar by using bodyweight rows, which many of you know are one of my favorite exercises by far. Incorporate these into your training, and then you have a horizontal bodyweight movement, so you can do a more vertical pull-up and you get the benefits of both. Even a seated row machine, anything like that is gonna give you those same benefits. And you could argue that there's not a huge amount of point in training pull-ups with a more horizontal position because one of the big benefits of the pull-up is that it is a vertical pull and it's one of very few vertical pull movements that we do apart from the lat pull down. If you're doing vertical pushes like a shoulder press, which you probably should be, then you should be doing a vertical pull as well to balance things out. At the same time, vertical pulling is useful for a bunch of different things, in particular climbing. If you want to climb over a wall, if you want to do rock climbing, you don't have the option of arching your spine and bringing all those different muscles into play. So you should be learning to pull yourself up in a more vertical position as well. And in fact, there's a pull-up variation for this, which is called the tactical pull-up. When performing a tactical pull-up, the idea is pretty much the opposite. Instead of arching the spine and getting into extension, you instead want to adopt a hollow body position. That means you're gonna be slightly protracting the shoulder blades now. You're gonna be tensing the rectus abdomini on the front of the stomach, and you're going to be creating a concave position in the opposite way. Engage the hip flexors, get your legs slightly pointed forwards, point the toes, create tension throughout the entire body. Then what you're gonna do is put your hands on top of the bar so that your thumb is also on top of the bar. No gripping from underneath. This is important because if you are climbing a wall, then of course you can't grip your thumb underneath and this prepares you for that type of movement. Performing pull-ups in this position is perfect for military personnel, for rock climbers, for free runners, whereas the arched one is better for bodybuilders who want to create back development or anyone trying to improve their posture. 
I recommend that you combine both or a couple of exercises that train all these different things. Of course, pull-ups are also great for training the grip, and if you want to take this a little bit further, then you can try using a crimp or a half crimp grip, like a rock climb. And another variation that's similar of the tactical pull-up is to use a similar grip, just your fingers, take your thumb completely off the bar, and this is so that if you ever had to climb a wall or something, holding onto a torch or something in that hand, then you'd be able to do that keeping your thumb free. And you can even just practice holding something in that hand whilst performing pull-ups, which is quite a fun and unusual way to mix up your pull-up training. Conversely, if you want to strengthen your grip during the movement and thereby increase the number of pull-ups that you can perform, then you might want to consider wrapping your fingers tightly over the bar and then using your thumb underneath and lapping it on top of your finger. What this does is it creates a closed loop. You call your thumbs opposing thumbs because they create the most strength by opposing the other digits. And this one little change can actually increase your max number of pull-ups. Alternatively, if you simply get your fingers more on top of the bar, more like a false grip, so that the finger knuckles are on top of the bar, this can actually increase activation of the lats. It's really interesting how just changing the positions of your hands can really alter a movement. Hands should ideally be about shoulder width apart or just slightly wider. These bars are basically right where I want to put my hands, unfortunately. Another question that you might be asking is what the ideal range of motion for your pull-ups are. And again, the answer really depends what your goals are for the pull-up. So if you want to increase your work capacity and stimulate hypertrophy, I actually recommend using a slightly more limited range of motion. This is going to allow you to perform more repetitions. It's going to prevent the muscle from relaxing, causing blood to pull there, increasing the buildup of metabolites, which can contribute to hypertrophy. And at the same time, it's going to make for a much faster and more explosive and dynamic exercise, which is going to get your heart rate up, thereby building muscle, and at the same time, burning some calories. High, high repetition bodyweight training is an overlooked and underutilized training method, which is great for just packing on size and building a kind of strength endurance, which is really functional and useful out there in the real world. And if you're worried about losing some strength by not performing the full range of motion, then I ask you, when would you ever pull something from up high and intentionally completely raise your arm overhead? You wouldn't. You'd always start with your arms about here and pull from there. What we do want is that mobility, whether it's for performing handstands or anything else. And in that case, what you can do is you can completely relax and lower yourself to the very bottom of the pull-up in between each repetition and even allow your shoulders to slightly raise up like this. This is essentially a dead hang. If you hang like this just for minutes at a time, it's a fantastic way to open up the shoulders, increase mobility, and even to decompress the spine. It can be, once again, fantastic for undoing some of the damage that we cause by being in a hunched position all day. Normally in dead hangs, you just hang there for a minute or so. But if you're performing pull-ups, if you slowly lower yourself into that same position, hang for a moment and then pull yourself back up, you're completely removing any momentum, any stretch reflex. So you're now having to engage a lot more strength from cold each time. Don't drop hard into that position. This can cause pain and injury. And at the same time, if you're new to training or if you're not that confident in your shoulder strength and stability, then you might want to build up to this and instead you can just place one foot gently on the floor or two feet gently on the floor to take off a little bit of that pressure whilst you're in that position. I've heard it said that getting to this position can actually increase your risk of shoulder impingement, but according to research by one John Kirsch, it's actually the opposite. This position could actually open up the shoulders and even slightly move the acromion to ease any impingement pain you might have and to prevent it from happening in the first place. And finally, pull-ups of course serve as a perfect jumping off point for a whole range of cool variations, particularly plyometric movements, things that involve manipulating your body weight in the air. Like I say, this is a fantastic tool for building your strength to weight ratio. If you're a rock climber, if you're a circus performer, if you're a free runner, then being able to lift your body weight with ease is a really important skill and at the same time, it can just look fantastic like it's gravity defying. And if you look at videos from the likes of Bar Stars and those guys, you'll see that some really, truly incredible stuff is possible. So as I said, there's much more to the humble pull-up than meets the eye.
Let me know if I missed anything in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching this video, guys. If you like this kind of training that looks beyond the surface level and aims to improve all round performance as well as just strength and size, then you might enjoy my ebook and training program, Super Functional Training. You'll find a link to that in the description down below. By the way, this is my first video back from paternity leave, so if I'm a bit rusty, then I apologize. I am working on the Batman training for 2022, as well as a bunch of other really cool stuff. It's a little bit delayed just because I took a whole month off, but yeah, we're back full steam ahead now. Got some really exciting things planned, so if you wanna see that, then please subscribe and hit the bell button to get notifications. Either way, thank you so much, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.